Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC Hobby. The plane is just about built, I'm having a couple of little issues. This is just a difference in where I want to take the airplane. What I want to do is I want to be able to have these flaps be flapperons. I want them to be able to drop down as close to 90 degrees as possible. And then, of course, I want to have a normal, you know, up and down uh, aileron function. I want to be able to add a little bit of reflex uh, to, so I can have different flight modes, uh, have a few degrees of up, basically the opposite of flaps, which is reflex. I want to be able to drop the flaps down uh, just a couple degrees for thermaling and... Uh, things like that and the problem that I'm coming across is that um, the relationship between the control horns uh, and the length of the control horns on the servo and the horns on the ailerons the the travel just isn't that much let me just show you I've got a servo tester uh, hooked up here with a battery and I've got both servos hooked up and linkages set and that is maximum in one direction and that is maximum in the other. Now, that's not even a lot of throw for ailerons. If that's as far down as that goes, if I drop both uh, down, I'm not getting a lot of flap. Um, I'm certainly not getting good flap breaking um, in the you know at the level that I'd like so uh, the only options that I see is number one would be to use uh, a shorter horn um, and the only way to do that would be to drill uh, another hole in the existing carbon fiber horn now I don't think that's uh, a viable option because it's gonna be so close to the flap or aileron that it's uh, it's the control rod will probably bind. The other option would be a longer control horn on the servo, and that can't work either. Let me just move the camera here real quick. As you can see, these horns are as close to the edge of the fuselage as they can be. There's no way to use a even slightly wider horn. And this is an issue I ran into with these lines here. Um, I had to switch this horn 180 degrees and run the line down this side because if it was pointing over here, the line this line, the forward one, was catching on the control horn for the rearmost servo. Uh, so that was going to make for inconsistent uh, elevator, and that's not something that I could live with. Certainly the plane wouldn't fly predictably and uh, consistently because it would catch and then release, and that would make several degrees of change in the rear stabilizer surface, uh, causing the plane to fly erratically. Uh, so I had to run it down this side, and as you can see, it's already you know resting against the edge of this horn, uh, but that is at minimal enough that it doesn't cause any visible problem. I you know I know other people have built this plane and and uh, you know make this work. Um, you know definitely an experienced builder, but I'm running against problems as far as uh you know what i want things to do for example you know i there's two holes on this horn and i'm using one of them for the screw now i could have cut both of these horns down to the size of a of the first hole the closest hole to the pivot like these are and then the two lines probably would have run uh, without brushing up against each other. They would have probably been right there on the line, but that would have worked.
The problem is, is if I'd use the inner holes, again, just like with the aileron, I'm not getting enough of uh, enough range of motion, uh, which means that the rudder and rudder and elevator would have had a very limited amount of motion. Even with this setup, they are only going out about 15 degrees. You know, I, I like to have as much throw as possible, especially for a plane that's designed to have a certain amount of aerobatic potential. So ideally, I'd like to, you know, I, I have every bit of what I have and then uh, use a second flight mode uh, to have a reduced throw for times when you want it, but uh, be able to flick a switch and have the maximum amount of throw. That's something that a lot of planes have. Um, but it just wouldn't work with this one if I was using that inner hole. So what I think I'm going to do, I, I wanted to build this plane as close to the instructions and as close to its original design without changes so that you guys could follow this and so that you guys could build this plane. Now, I'm not knocking the plane. I am and I'm not. I like this plane. I'm really looking forward to flying it. I think it's got a lot of potential. Number one, this is not a beginner's build. It's not even a, a, an average person's build. Um, this is a difficult plane to build, particularly setting up the control surfaces. If I had not done what I did here with these screws to anchor these lines so that I can adjust the tension, if I had just pulled them taut and crimped uh, the lines as, um, and I can't even say as the instructions say, because the instructions don't say. The instructions give you very, very little input. And that seems to be true of most kits these days. They give you very little direction. They leave a lot to the builder unless the plane, for example, like the, uh, the Timber X that I just bought, um, which you'll see videos for shortly. That plane is 99% done. The control rods are already run. They're already measured. All you have to do is bind and fly. Literally, it's, it's a few minutes worth of work. The instructions say this can be built in 30 minutes. That's absolutely ridiculous. I'm probably spending more than 30 hours building this. That's probably an exaggeration, but I'm spending a lot of time on this. And, and I do that because I want a nice plane. Uh, discus launch gliders are, are very high performance airplanes by their nature. Um, they tend to be very aerobatic uh, and um, that's one of the things that appeals about them. So, on to the solution for these ailerons. There's two things I can do. Number one, I can keep servos in the fuselage. That means I need to get rid of these two servos. And I need to swap in for some other servos that I already have, and I can put links to those. Uh, they are thinner servos, so they would be closer together, which means I could use a slightly longer control horn. The problem with that is I still have to deal with this linkage down here under the wing. Now, the wing is removable, but it's a bit of a pain because, yeah, you take two screws off the top of the wing and you can take the wing off, but you have to remove this linkage, which means you have to loosen this screw so you can pull that control rod out of the the brass fitting that's on the other side of that screw which means every time you put the plane back together you have to first get the two control rods into the teeny holes in those little brass fittings and then anchor the wing down and once the wing is anchored down then you have to tighten these again in such a way that the wing is exactly where you need it to be. The aileron is exactly where you need it to be. If it's not exactly where it was when you took it apart, you're going to have to re-trim the airplane's ailerons every time you put the wing on. 
and that's just too much darn work. It's just a pain. So what I'm going to do, and I've pretty much decided that I'm going to do this, I'm going to put uh, two servos in the wing, and I haven't decided how far out I'm going to mount them. I'm probably going to mount them at least in this uh, second space between the uh, uh, first and second outer spar, probably here. I want as much uh, equidistant leverage against these um, hinges. Uh, these hinges are a little tight. One thing you can do to loosen these is to uh, fold the aileron all the way under until it's touching under here and stretch out that hinge. And that's what I did. And that loosened it up a little bit, but you still, with the horn all the way inboard, when I move this you can if you look along the wing there's far less motion outboard than there is inboard so having the new control horn location be a little further outboard uh, that will make uh, more leverage toward the outer edge of the wing and uh, should help with that issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, those are the only two solutions and the the best solution by far is to put the servos in the wing. Uh, that's going to allow for a, a real flapper on configuration where these flaps can be run all the way down you know to nearly 90 degree angle and then have full aileron functionality on top of that. That's going to be the best solution for this airplane. So I'm going to start working on that and I will uh, video all of that for you. I've, I've put a lot of thought into this and um, I've done a lot of uh, tinkering and measuring and uh, tried to come up with uh, other options. Um, because again, I wanted to try to build this in such a way that you guys could buy this and out of the box, um, you know, even if you needed to buy a few little parts like some, some horns or something like that, that you could get a, uh, a good build without having to do something like buy a couple of servos. Now the servos that I'm going to use are, uh, uh, let me just go ahead and pull one down. Okay, these are the servos that I'm going to use, and they're very fast servo, and they're reasonably high torque. They're definitely a higher performance servo than what's in there. Um, they're metal geared ball bearing servos, and they are quite small, and they're very thin, uh, which is necessary for this wing because this is a very uh, short airfoil. So these are going to fit in, in the wing without bulging the covering. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.